It has become one of the most powerful fighting groups in the region. Thousands of Arab and foreign fighters make up its ranks. They are led by Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The mysterious figure was captured by U.S. forces in Iraq in 2005, but was later released. The group has its origins in Al-Qaeda in Iraq, led by Abu Mus'ab al-Zarqawi. Zarqawi was killed by U.S. forces in 2006, and the group became known as the Islamic State in Iraq under the leadership of Abu Umar al-Baghdadi. Baghdadi was killed by U.S. and Iraqi forces in 2010, and the group got a new leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, also known as Ibrahim Awad Ibrahim al-Badri. This is the unofficial uh, affiliation of Al-Qaeda. It subscribes to Al-Qaeda's central ideology and tactics. It's one of the most extremist uh, militant organizations in the jihadist uh, family. The group moved into Syria, but when Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi tried to bring another jihadi group known as the Nusra Front under his control, Al-Qaeda disowned him. But that didn't stop Baghdadi's campaign. His group now controlled parts of northern and eastern Syria, including oil fields. In January, ISIL fighters sent a large force to Iraq's Anbar province. The Iraqi government launched a military campaign against the group, but it failed to root out ISIL fighters in Fallujah and Ramadi. And over the last week, ISIL launched daring attacks in two cities, Samarra and Mosul. Now the group controls territory in three Iraqi provinces bordering Syria, and that secures the free movement of weapons and fighters between the two countries. ISIL sources of funding and power remains unclear. Most probably it funds its own activities by relying on criminality, by relying on local uh, donations, uh, a great deal of private citizens in the Gulf, uh, basically in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, in uh, Qatar and other places, uh, send funds. But obviously it has its own sources uh, inside Iraq itself and Syria. Other critics claim the group is implementing the agenda of the Syrian, Iraqi and Iranian regimes. ISIL's real goals and backers remain unknown, but their attacks have now caught everyone's attention. Omar Saleh, Al Jazeera. Most of the information used in this video are coming from news articles, documents and files that are made available to the public. The Islamic State of Iraq, commonly known as Al-Qaeda in Iraq, was a militant Salafist jihadist group that has aimed to establish an Islamic State in the Sunni Arab majority areas of Iraq during the Iraq War and later in Syria during the Syrian Civil War. The Islamic State of Iraq traces its origins to the Jamaat al-Tawhid wal-Jihad, which was formed by the Jordanian National Abu Musab al-Zarqawi in Jordan in the year of 1999. Al-Zarqawi led the group under numerous name changes until his death in June of 2006. The Jamaat al-Tawhid participated in the Iraqi insurgency between the years 2003 to 2011, following the invasion of Iraq by Western forces. And on October 17, 2004, al-Zarqawi had pledged allegiance to Osama bin Laden's al-Qaeda network and the group became known as Tanzim Al-Qaeda Al-Jihad Bilad Al-Rafida, commonly known as Al-Qaeda in Iraq. In January of 2006, the group and five other Iraqi insurgent groups formed the Mujahideen Shura Council, which on October 15, 2006, merged to form what is commonly known as the Islamic State of Iraq. At the height of their existence in 2006 and 2008, the ISI had military units or strongholds in Mosul and in the governance of Baghdad, Al Anbar, and Diyala. And they also claimed Bakbara as their capital. The area under its control decreased dramatically following the 2007 troop surge, during which dozens of ISIL leaders were killed by coalition forces. However, not everything is as it seems. Was it just some crazy ultra-Orthodox group hell-bent on creating a caliphate in Iraq? Well, that isn't the whole story. 
explosive new documents uncovered by Der Spiegel's Christoph Ruder, published in 2015, revealed that there was a dark secret at the heart of ISIS. It was not radical Islamists who conceived and created ISIS, they suggest, but rather a small group of senior Iraqi officers in Saddam Hussein's brutal police state. Their plan appears to have been to use ISIS to reconquer Iraq. For them, jihadism was simply a means to the end of retaking the country they had lost, a counterattack to the 2003 US-led invasion that toppled them from power. Der Spiegel says it uncovered the documents from a house in Syria that were used by a former Iraqi military intelligence official who, before he was killed in a 2014 firefight, went by the name Haj Bakr. The documents show the blueprint for the creation of the Islamic State written before the group became what it is today and executed the detail. While we have known for some time that former officers in Saddam's military were working with ISIS, they shared a Sunni background and a hatred of the new American installed government. These documents suggest the officers were far more involved in planning and launching the Islamic State than previously thought. <clears throat> As Der Spiegel's stunning investigation found, the Islamic State, or ISIS, was created in much the same way as Saddam's police state. Hajj Bakr's goal was to use the chaos and extremism of the Syrian war to build up the new group in Syria, along with the help of the CIA, giving it a beachhead from what it could invade and conquer much of Iraq. Once there, it would set up an intricate and Orwellian system of control in the mold of Saddam's Iraq. Until now, much of the information from the Islamic State had come from fighters who had defected and data sets from the Islamic State internal administration seized in Baghdad. But none of this offered an explanation for the group's meteoric rise to prominence before airstrikes in the late summer of 2014 put a stop to its triumphal march. Bakr's documents were long hidden in a tiny addition to a house in embattled northern Syria. Reports of their existence were first made by an eyewitness who had seen them in Hodge Bakr's house shortly after his death. In April of 2014, a single page from the file was smuggled to Turkey, where Der Spiegel was able to examine it for the first time. It only became possible to reach Tal Rifiat to evaluate the entire set of handwritten papers in November of 2014. Our greatest concern was that these plants could fall into the wrong hands and would never become known said the man who has been storing Hodgebacher's notes after pulling them out under a tall stack of boxes and blankets. The man fearing the ISIS death squads wishes to remain anonymous. The story of this collection of documents begins at a time when few had heard of the Islamic State, when Iraqi national Hodgebacher traveled to Syria as part of a tiny advanced party in late 2012, he had a seemingly absurd plan. Islamic State would capture as much territory as possible in Syria, then using Syria as a beachhead, it would invade Iraq. Bakr took up residence in an inconspicuous house in Tal Rifiat, north of Aleppo. The town was a good choice. In the 1980s, many of its residents had gone work in the Gulf nations, especially Saudi Arabia. When they returned, some brought along radical convictions and contracts. In 2013, Tal Rifiat would become Islamic State stronghold in Aleppo province with hundreds of fighters stationed there. It was there that the Lord of the Shadows, as some called him, sketched out the structure of the Islamic State all the way down to the local level, compiled lists relating to the gradual infiltration of villages and determined who would oversee them. Using a ballpoint pen, he drew the chains of command in the security apparatus on stationary. Through presumably a coincidence, the stationary was from the Syrian Defense Ministry and bore the letterhead of the department in charge of accommodations and furniture. What Bakker put on paper page by page with carefully outlined boxes for individual responsibilities was nothing less than a blueprint for a takeover. It was not a manifesto of faith, but a technically precise plan for an Islamic intelligence state, a caliphate run by an organization that resembled East Germany's notorious Stasi Domestic Intelligence Agency. The blueprint was implemented with astonishing accuracy in the ensuing months. The plan would always begin with the same detail, 
the group recruited followers under the pretense of opening a Dawah office, an Islamic missionary center. Of those who came to listen to lectures and attend courses on Islamic life, one or two men were selected and instructed to spy on their village and obtain a wide range of information. To that end, Hodge Bakker compiled lists such as the following. List the powerful families. Name the powerful individuals in these families. Find out their sources of income. Name names and the sizes of rebel brigades in the village. Find out the names of their leaders who control the brigades and their political organizations and orientation. Find out their illegal activities according to Sharia law, which could be used to blackmail them if necessary. A work published online in 2004 entitled Management of Savagery, described by several media outlets as influential on the Islamic State in Levant and intended to provide a strategy to create a new Islamic caliphate, recommended a strategy of attack outside its territory in which fighters would diversify and widen the vexation strikes against the crusader Zionist enemy in every place in the Islamic world and even outside of it possible so as to disperse the efforts of the alliance of the enemy and thus drain it to the greatest extent possible. The Islamic State, in other words, would replace one totalitarianism with another. Though Saddam's Iraq had been Sunni and secular and ISIS Iraq would be Sunni and Islamist, the same group of former Saddam officials would remain at the top. For Haj Bakr and the other officers working with him, the group's apocalyptic jihadism would simply be a vehicle for their return to power. Der Spiegel's Christoph Reuter, quote, there was a simple reason why there is no mention in Bakr's writings of prophecies relating to the establishment of an Islamic state, allegedly ordained by God. He believed that fanatical religious convictions alone were not enough to achieve victory but he did believe that the faith of others could be exploited. In 2010, Bakr and a small group of former Iraqi intelligence officers made Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the emir, and later caliph, the official leader of the Islamic State. They reasoned that Baghdadi, an educated cleric, would give the group a religious face. Haj Bakr was a nationalist, not an Islamist, says the Iraqi journalist Hisham al-Hashimi. Bakr's joining journey from serving in a violently secular regime to helping found a violently Islamist group began in 2003 after the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq. One of America's first decisions on taking Iraq, a terrible mistake that has haunted the region ever since, was to disband Iraq's enormous army, leaving its officers and soldiers with no income. Through the Iraqi Provisional Orders Number 1 and Number 2, which were ordered by L. Poor Bremer. After that, the country fell into chaos. Without any work, the former Iraqi militants in the Iraqi military and the police had no other choice but to join Bakr's army. And through the Ba'athist officials, they started training, along with the help of the CIA, in training former Arab militants, groups that would continue to organize in small groups, now would come into one big group headed under the Baptist officials. This speaks to a terrible irony of the 2003 American-led invasion of Iraq. The war was premised in part on the assertion that Saddam's regime was linked to an anti-American jihadist terrorists. This was a falsehood, but the invasion made the falsehood true, but in more terrible fashion than we ever imagined possible. Hodge Bakker, desperate after 2003 to defeat the Americans and the new Shia majority government fought alongside Sunni extremists in Iraq. Later, he began, he began constructing ISIS. As Der Spiegel's investigation found, he was able to use his knowledge of running an oppressive security state to build up ISIS into more than just another jihadist group. As Der Spiegel's Reuter writes, there are unmistakable parallels in the architectures of ISIS and of Saddam's Iraq. The two systems ultimately shared the conviction that control over the masses should lie in the hands of a small elite that should not be answerable to anyone, he writes. 
The secrets of ISIS success lies in the combination of opposites, the fanatical beliefs of one group and strategic calculations of the other. The agents and spies ordered by the Islamic State were supposed to function as a seismic signal wave sent out to track down the tiniest cracks, as well as age-old thoughts within the deep layers of society. In short, any information that could be used to divide and subjugate the local population can and will be used. The informants included former intelligence spies, but also regime opponents who had quarreled with one of the rebel groups. Some were also young men and adolescents who needed money or found the work exciting. Most of the men on Backer's list of informants, such as those from Tal Rifiat, were in their early 20s, but some were even as young as 16 and 15. Just when you thought that the Islamic State was just an ordinary group led by Wahhabi principles, one can only imagine that the enormous amount of weight and pressure by the former Baptist officials, as well as certain CIA officers who helped to create an enemy that they would later fight at the same time while behind the backs of the American officials and American military who are on the face fighting against the Islamic State were, of course, training and funding them at the same time. 